Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to go to Askruff and sort of look at a question. But I think there's an underlining question underneath it. So let me kind of clarify. So if we come over in, into this and we go to Askruff. Milan here. I've got a question about Monday's call about the Bollinger Band indicator that we were discussing. Mm -hmm. Can we use it as a plus one, minus one, and can we replace the Bolly Band with the MACD, or replace the MACD with the Bolly Band? Well, the answer is you can do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But each element of your trading plan has a job. You know, MACD is general direction. It's very good for it. Bollinger Band is strength. It's very good for that. If I couldn't use one or the other, I would use the Bollinger Band simply because it tells me a couple of things. If it's above the moving average and it hasn't broke the top, it's genuinely pushing to the upper side unless it's collapsing in on itself. Likewise, if I'm going short, it's the opposite direction. MACD is obviously on the, the lines, shown direction. But I don't think that's really the question because I have a question. If you've got a system that clearly over time is more profitable than not, why change it? Why do you have the urge to tinker with something constantly? To me, that's chasing the market. It's looking for the holy grail and ultimately the road to ruin. Now, if you want to build up a plan, you should. And it should always be your own plan. So you take elements that you're happy with and you understand, like a dance partner. You know, if you you sort of dancing with this person, you know how it moves, you know what the nuances are, etc. Fine. But don't be chopping and changing over and over, looking for a holy grail. Now, I am incredibly brutal when I tell you just this isn't for you and you need to do something else. And a lot of people won't listen. In fact, they kick off when I say that. But what I'm actually doing is them a favor, big favor. Now, whatever system you have, stick with it. Understand what its strengths are and its failures. You need to do what's called a SWOT analysis. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That's what you do with your plan. And the way I do things, as we know, I use a basket of indicators, then I use them through baskets of time frames, and then I drill them down into a point where pretty much everything's stacked in my favor on the point of entry. And if I'm wrong, well, I'm wrong, I accept it. I've got a management system that gets me out of it. But it's just something that I've got used to doing and I'm quite good at it. But what I don't do is change time and time again. I do the same thing every single day, same set of tools, same set of criteria, no changes, no messing about, I just do the job. If I was changing every two minutes, I won't know which way I'm going. And all that happens is you lose your money. So I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a good ass scruff or not, but the advice is you can do whatever you want, but if you're changing it every single week, give up, pack in, go work in McDonald's. But if you're changing it because what you're doing isn't working, then you also have to stick with the other one for a decent length of time to make certain you understand what it is. It's no good back testing. Back testing's fine, but you're always seeing a perfect set of criteria. You need to forward test it for at least three months to make certain it's okay, all right? So that's the way I would answer that question. Catch you soon.